Hi everyone, my name is Mordecai Ogada and I consult for Survival International on conservation issues around the world. Today I'd like to talk a bit about the functioning and perception of national parks as white spaces. This is a serious problem all over the world, but we have to look back at the history of this tool in conservation. This started with the formation of Yellowstone National Park in the United States back in 1872 and it then followed with the formation of numerous other national parks all over the world in the years that followed. Now, this creation of national parks initially entailed the violent eviction of indigenous peoples from land that they had been using for generations in order to make room for what is said to be biodiversity conservation, but in truth it's to make room for the recreation of elites, and external persons who may want to enjoy that natural heritage either by visiting it, photographing it, or in some cases even hunting. Now, why this happens is because the creation of a protected area itself is a fallacy. For example, in Africa, it's known that our continent is the cradle of mankind. So the plains of Africa have had people and livestock in them for millions of years, depending on your belief system. But now we have created this myth that the ideal, pristine, natural environment is one that is devoid of human presence or human activity. And this has led to the violence that visits whenever conservation activities or conservation areas are envisioned, often by external parties. It is now time for us to look all over the world at how these national parks function and really rethink the way we perceive them and the way we use them. And this is not beyond us because right now we no longer have space to alienate people from their environment. We don't have the physical space and we don't have the ethical space either. So let's look at new ways of practicing conservation so that we can decolonize conservation. We are still practicing colonized conservation because we never changed the structures from before people were free. As you can see around the world, numerous civil society organizations and non-governmental organizations, NGOs, have grown out of the conservation movement and many of them have become very big. But they have also borrowed this same thinking from the creators of national parks.